already know what it is. It's Barbershop Conversations. Hit the subscribe and the like button today. What about you? When I sit down, you get it. When you sit down, I'll do the intro. Don't worry. We'll cut it out. What's up, Brandon? Oh, I'm not even cut in. That's what I'm saying. Like, what are you doing, bro? How is this going down? Are you shot camera? Camera? It's all right, bro. We, we'll, sure? we can take some of the sound off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Back on the you can decrease it. You can, but it's gonna be a little hard. Plus, this mic is facing this way, right? Yeah, so it's gonna good. catch most of everything here. Let me call him one Chris. Chris. Juan. Juan. Yeah, have him hit the double impact so we can lower those. Alright, y'all squeeze that. I'm gonna squeeze it. Right, squeeze, squeeze it with Yeah, thankfully, you know, <laughs> you ain't got that much weight on it. Motherfucker is fucking hard. Now we all can squeeze in. Yeah, hey, I can take off the sweater and shit. Fuck this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Fight Guys. Uh, returning crew, myself, Fernando. Look at that fucking throwback faggots in here, man. Let's just start right away with Brandon Rios. Yeah. Brandon, you didn't know that. No filter on this guy. There is no filter. This is uncut, unedited. Let's just do this. Brandon, let's talk about what everybody wants to talk about. That's you versus Victor Ortiz. Before we even get to that, though, were you surprised that you actually challenged you on Instagram? You know, considering what everybody thinks about the guy and everything, were you surprised that he actually challenged you? Oh, yeah, you know, because we, we've been out to the fight for a while, but, you know, it was just different emotion-wise, so we, it was never going to happen, but since my contract was over with Tough Rain, uh, I fucking, that's why I went to on him and I won that fight. I went to chase that fight. And he, I figured, I had a feeling that he knew I was coming from, so he, his type was against the wall, so he's like, fuck it, you gotta fight. So that's why he called me out. Yeah, so are you uh, are you without him officially without him or are you still a free agent that can get or can you? Well, we're working without him right now. You know, uh, he's a free agent, but he's I'm, still working without. I'm free agent right now, but we have me and I we have a verbal cover like a verbal agreement. My words are my you know I'm a man I keep my word. And I told Al Heyman and Al Heyman told me that we work together and we'll give you all the fights. And I was like, sure, because you got all the fights I want. You got all the 147 pounds, so why would I go somewhere else? So me and Al Heyman, we got something going on right now. So. Okay. Now, it looks like Vegas will probably have you two and a half, three to one favor, probably going to that fight. What's the new ceiling for Brandon Rios? You know, just get back, get back to the top. Uh, right now, you know, I'm training really hard. I'm very, I'm very focused again when I first started boxing, and I know what I want now. And just training hard, man. Just get back to the top. Uh, just to show all the doubters and all the haters, everybody that call me dumb, bunch of bad, whatever they want to call me. Uh, I want to show them that I'm not done yet. And you know, it was just my few losses were not just regular losses. You know, I fought one of the best in the world, Pacquiao. And then Mike Darrell with the trillion G's for what we had, it was fucking excellent. And the third one, Bradley, you know, there's no shame in that. And when they're going to the Bradley fight, that wasn't me, myself. Uh, everybody knows that. When I fight, I didn't fight like that. But at the end of the day, fuck it. I mean, kudos to Bradley. Bradley came in, he's done his game plan, and he trained for a hard for that fight, and I can't say I did. So, you know what? I much respect both Bradley, and I just want to get back to the top again, show everybody that I'm not done yet. I still got a lot in my, in my tank, a lot of gas in my tank, and I just want to show the world that I'm not done yet. This is a question for Ricky. Let's talk about the resurgence of Brandon Rios. Is this the perfect fight against Victor Ortiz to show that he is back on top? It's a perfect fight. Because uh, we were looking for a tuna fight in July, you know. And uh, they offered they offer him Miguel Cotto, you know, and you know that, that would be too, too quick, too soon. Mm -hmm. we're, we, Brandon and I would say, we know we just gotta get a tuna fight. And you know, when when uh, Victor Ortiz called him out, I said, man, this is the perfect this fight. Yeah. This is the perfect fight. Yeah, well, this is right, it's right on our hands. You know, and let me tell you something. And, and I sat down right before Brandon reached out to me, and uh, I asked him personally, go, get in the camera, how, how, I'm good. I'm in. I you go, mean? how did you lose these fights? He goes, look, let me tell you something. I was out for nine months. <laughs> when I when I fought Pacquiao, I was out for nine months. I came to train. I was there two months, just losing weight mm -hmm. instead of focusing on on technique and so forth. I go, okay. Makes sense. He goes, I was out of shape. I, I, I took it. It's a big payday. I'm not. I'm not gonna let that go by. And then he called Bradley for same thing. He goes, I just want to train two months and just to lose weight. 
But with us, we've been training since April, on and off. Mm -hmm. But we've been steady training since November. And he's down to 156 right now, which I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of him because people always say, oh, you're gonna lose, he's always <laughs> overweight. Mm -hmm. You know what, I have him, he jokes around, he likes to play around. You know how he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, everybody know knows right here. Everybody knows right in the real. He knows that he, he likes to fuck around. But when he comes here, he fucks around. I let him do what he does, but he focuses. Right. He trains hard. You know, uh, there's days that he's going to look like a badass in here, and there's days they're going to have those outfits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, which is understandable. But you know, we, we have that mutual respect between each other. You know, he listens to me, and he wants to act like he doesn't. Hey, Fran! But he, he's, doing a, he's doing a great job. You know, he's, he's training hard. Right. You know, here's another question for you and Brandon. Brandon, uh, it's too hot. Victor, it's too hot. Victor is, is, is clearly a talented guy. But oh, great he, he breaks down mentally. You know, Talk to us about that, and will that be an advantage? Well, look, he's a talented guy. Why, why you say he's a talented guy? I mean, he is. He's a talented guy. But what? Because he fucking played little role models in fucking movie scenes. I'm saying talented as a fighter. As a fighter. Look, look, look. As a fighter. Hey, Victor has to. We're not talking about a fucking talented guy. That motherfucker would have been way on top of the game. If he was a talented fucking guy in the ring, he would have been on top of the game. Well, that's what you were saying. He mentally breaks down. It's not even about that. If he was talented. Talented guy, he would have had that mental breakdown. Yeah. He would be fucking always on his shit. He would be on point. Yeah. So you can't come in here and say this guy's a fucking talented guy he's when he's always breaking down. Yeah. He's never been a talented guy. I know this motherfucker since day one. He's never been a talented guy. He's, he's never been a talented guy. Talk to us about that history. Tell us about that history. Tell us about the challenge. Tell us about the hate. Are you going to break this guy down? I'm not breaking down. Early? Open the door. I'm, I'm, I'm just ready to go fucking do what I got to do. Get the shit out of my fucking head and get this motherfucker out of my head. My name out of his fucking mouth. Now you open said, the, open the back door. Now you said February 4th, but obviously yeah, that, yeah, yeah, but that, that date's long gone. Yeah. Now, given the time for now, do we have not a date but a specific window when we? Yes, we, we do now. And today we're waiting for the answer. You know, our lawyer Lupe uh, Valencia, which is Chavez Jr. They're yeah. negotiating as well with Alvin for for the Canelo fight. Yeah. At the same time, they're negotiating with uh, Victor T's fight. Um, they told it was gonna be. They offered the spot before the Super Bowl on the February 4th. Um, but it wasn't right. It wasn't. It wasn't right. You know, the networks they want to pay what Brandon deserves to get paid. Uh, even though Brandon lost his last fight, people don't understand. He's still. He's, he's still a, he, a name. Yeah, he's still Ortiz a name. Ortiz is still a name. Well, yeah. This fight has been brewing forever. Like, yeah. And it's going to be more than likely here in Southern California. Yeah, it is going to be here. It's going to be here. They, they, they have the venue already. They just don't want to tell me right now. So, so hopefully today. Okay. And, uh, it's going to be in the, in the in the couple weeks of March. I don't want to tell you the date because they, yeah, had told, I mean. they had told me February 4th. Now it changed. So I want to be right on track when, when they tell me that. Um, it's going to be a good fight. I mean, look. You the reason why it's gonna be a good fight because the animosity that we have against each other. Oh, man. The fucking hate that we have Talk about the hate. Where did yeah, they yeah, come yeah, from? Yeah, where did they come from? I mean, because he is a talent. He was a talent fighter. <laughs> no, he's, I'm, a skill, I'm, he's a skilled skill skill fighter. fighter. You know what I mean? Y'all yeah, 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 motherfucker, get your shit straight. Yeah. Talented fighter is a talented motherfucker that comes like a Mayweather. That's a talented fighter. That's a talented fighter. A skilled fighter is a motherfucker that comes in with the skills, but does he have the heart and the ball? That's what I mean. He's a skilled fighter. Like, he, doesn't have, he doesn't have that boxer, he doesn't have that mm -hmm. boxer ability, he doesn't have that puncher ability, that puncher. Yeah. That's it. So, when you want to talk about a talented guy, you're talking about fucking Mayweather. That's a talented guy. And, and I'm going to tell you this. But if you want to talk about a skilled boxer, okay, Victor's a skilled boxer, but does he have the heart, the no, ball, yeah. and the yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, people, wait. people always say this about in the comments, Brandon Rios is a puncher guy. <laughs> I kind of compare this with him with Winky Wright. Winky Wright had almost the same skill set and great defense. Brandon has the, I think, one of the great defense when he's in there. He was getting hit. I mean, you're getting hit. You're getting hit. Remember this. This is a shield. This is a shield. I mean, when Brandon, all he just stayed like a, yeah, but now he's gonna fucking do everything different ways. Talk, talk to us about that because I've seen some of the training videos. And if you haven't seen it, I've seen his head. Well, Ellie's done a great job. Ellie's done a great job covering you guys. Go check out his channel. He does actually have videos of Brandon training. Check out Fight Hype. He's done it as well. You've seen his head movement. You can see his footwork. You can see com a completely different reel oh. than what everybody's used to. Like you said, he's not in the gym just losing weight. He's actually training. He's not in here just to lose no, weight. No. He's doing what he's supposed to do. So it's like, 
<laughs> Talk to us about and that. losing weight. No, no, no. <laughs> Brandon is losing weight. He's training hard. He's wor we're working on the basic fundamentals. Simple as that. Using your jab. Brandon was not used to using his jab. He just wanted to go in there and brawl and brawl. Not, you know, it's gonna be really hard to try to change that from him because, because he's been with Robert since he was 18, 17 years old. I'm, I'm not trying to change out. What I'm trying to do is just add on this little arsenal to his artillery and, and go from there. You know, head boom is gonna come. But when you go inside the fight and he gets hit by Victor, he's gonna go back to his own ways. But he's gonna be in shape and everything that we've been practicing is little things are gonna come out. Now let me ask you guys this tough question because you said uh, Brandon Rios is basically a talented fighter, not a skillful fighter. Now the betting public will say, Victor Ortiz, yeah. You said Rios, oh Brandon, okay. Brandon, he's gonna punch you. Now, now, some may say Victor Ortiz has quit quite a few times. Everyone will never forget Maidana. Say the Colazo. Okay, yeah. All right, Colazo. Well, Mayweather, you know what I mean? He was doing actually all right yeah, in the first round, round, but, first round, but, but once Mayweather gets the, the cold, it's just a wrap anyway. that, but when you got here with Mayweather, he could've got up. You hit him, yeah. He could've got up. And he got up when, when Madonna dropped, and that was up. And, then, and Madonna dropped oh, hard. He dropped it hard. He got up once for Berto, yeah. and then and, and, and you smarted him. And Berto right? dropped him. Yeah, yeah he, he, was, he got up. You smarted him. You smarted him. You know the best. Not like that. I smarted him. Oh, I smarted him. Thank you, thank you. Okay. And then the flip side, someone would say, but you didn't take Bradley serious. So why should I trust you and, and or why should I trust Ortiz? This is, this is it, right? When I fought Bradley, I was out. Nobody gave me, they, they pretty much said it on me. So I was like, as a fighter, you guys don't know this shit because you guys are not fighting. Yeah. So as a fucking fighter itself, when you get discouraged and you don't get that fucking fight, you don't have nothing lined up, what are you gonna do? Oh fuck, I'm gonna spend time with my family. So I spend time with my family. I gotta spend time with my kid, which I'm always training. So I spend time with my family, just chill with them, everything. I came into camp when they called me and said, You're gonna know, fight Bradley. You know, me, I, me like myself, I should've been like a smart guy and say, Fuck that. But you know, me, me as a warrior, as a, like a little fight, as a fuck it, let's do it. I went to camp 190. Ooh. One Damn. fucking 90. Yeah. It took me fucking five, five to six weeks just to start losing the weight to get back in the group. I was eight months out of commission after Bradley, after I brought a fight. Eight months out of shit. I didn't even run, I should have been a discipline fighter as a professional, but I didn't. You know, I was like, fuck, you know, I was like, take, take my time, chill, relax, give my family. Give that time to my family that I haven't done in a while, so I don't give that to my family. So like I said, when I came back to gym, it took me forever. And when I fought Bradley, it wasn't me. People were gonna go in there and say, oh, Bradley was a friend of Twitter, he quit against Bradley. He got, he got knocked out by the soft middle hand. At the end of the fucking day, let me hit any of you motherfuckers in the body shot. Any of you motherfuckers in the body shot. Don't get me. I don't even want to get it. I don't want to get it. Let me hit anyone in the body shot. And let me see how you guys take that shit. I've seen the video of you hitting Ellie. I'm good with that. I've seen the video of you hitting Ellie. I'm good. I'm good. It is not just Bradley hit me hard and nothing like that. It was just the body shot. And they got me down the body shot. I got back up. But the referee didn't want me to continue. So as a day, fuck it. It is what it is. I was dead. Uh, even that fight, even that morning, when I got up in the morning, I told Robert, dude, I'm going to fight. I'm going to do And I, I was so drained, sucked up. The day before wins, I was in my room, 2 o'clock in the morning, with Trevor running, sweating. I jumped in the episode back three fucking times. Wow. Uh, fuck it, we saw my muscles relax and everything. And dude, it was just, that whole training camp was not even a training camp. It was just training to lose weight. Mm. And like I said, at the end of the day, I don't want to blame on nobody but myself. Because I should have been in the ring, I should have been in the gym, but it wasn't. So, like I said, I know I'm supposed to blame on Robert. I knew Robert because of, I knew Robert because of that fight. No, uh, me and Robert, we, we have, you know, I love Robert to death. as my boy, but I not leave him because of that fight. So everybody gets that shit out of their head and everything like that. I not leave him because of that fight. But, that's what happened. So now I'm rejuvenated. I took a year off. I needed that year off to get back and start thinking and see what I really want to do. And 
Honestly, after the bread fight, I did consider about retirement. Well, you did retire. Yeah, I did. I did. I did announce it. I was done. So my wife talked to me and she told me. My wife's a therapist. And she told me. She told me, babe, if you're going to quit boxing, quit fucking boxing. I don't want you to come back later when it's too late and get yourself hurt and try to do it again. So if you're going to quit it, quit it. You don't have to give me an answer today, you don't have to give me an answer tomorrow. So you got you to think about it really hard and think really, really hard what you want to do. So that's what I did. I waited like a month to think about it and I was just thinking, thinking, thinking. And I was like, you know what? She's right. You know, these guys fighting the ring, I was still getting that urge because I watched a lot of boxing. I was like, fuck, man, that could be me, that could be me. You know what? I, that's why I fucking call. I call, I call Robin first. I told Robin, hey, bro, I think about fighting again. I want to sit down and talk to you face to face. And he told me, good, Brandon, that's good. I know you got a lot left in you. He didn't know I was gonna leave him. So, you know, I came to him like a man. So I went to Robert and I told him, you know what, bro? I don't want to fight again, but I think I'm going to do it without you. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look somewhere else. I want to have my dad and you know, I want my dad to be with my last, my last five years. And Robert's like, you know, he was hurt as well as I was because, you know, that's the hard thing to do. Because I, I respect... Well, we've never seen you without yeah, Robert. Yeah, and I respect Robert, Robert like a brother. You know? you know, he's a brother from another mother. So, and you know, that conversation went on. So, you know how I got a little reason is I went on Google. <laughs> Serious? Swear to God. I swear, I oh, no that. way. No way. <laughs> I swear to God. You got, you're making sure you got that. You're a world class right. fighter and you can put on Google to look for a trainer. I actually, I was thinking about going to Terrence Crawford. Oh, well, you did. And then Terrence Crawford trainer. Yeah, you are. But then again, I but. thought about it. I would have to maybe call around the spring. I know I'd rather stay home because I feel better. I'm home with my family. I don't have to worry about nothing. So, you know what? Then I, I go with boxers in, uh, boxers in, uh, boxer trainers in California. You know, Fred Rose came up. Fred Rose came up. I was like, I see you came up. Right, Fred Rose, Roberts, everybody came up like that. You know, and I was like, nah, nah, you know, I don't want to go Fred Rose. Obviously, obviously. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. Not nothing against Fred Rose, but like, you know, I just don't want to go Fred because I don't want that monster to come here and rob you know, yeah. Robert, you know. Uh -huh. we're still cool, we keep it cool, you know, I was like, nah, I'm on jet to Robert, and then there was another fighter in uh, San Diego, and I was like, well, I still have to travel to San Diego, but then, and I seen Tim Guzman, and I was like, oh, fuck, dude, Tim Guzman, Ricky, it was, <laughs> Ricky didn't show up, though, it was, Tim Guzman, it came up, Joel, uh -huh. Joel, Joel Guzman, yeah. yeah, really, I'm about to change that shit up, <laughs> So Joe came up and I was like, fuck, dude, Tim Goose the Boss, dude, there's Ricky. I didn't think about Joe, I was like, there's Ricky. So that, right away, I went Ricky DM. I hit Ricky DM, oh, I was like, hey, call me right away. And he called me right away, and then I was like, hey, bro, I'm looking for a trainer. And I guess he was trying to give Eddie my number. Oh, but, wow. But, really? But I had to change my number. So he didn't have my new number. Wow. And so I guess I, go, I hit him in the DM, and then he called me, and then right away, we fucking met, and I came over, and then. Actually, you know, I went to you. Well, I went over there to yeah. uh, Agora Hill. We went to Agora Hill. We were there for like two and a half months. Two and a half months, I was training right there. And then I, we came over here because the heater and everything moved yeah. way faster. Uh -huh. so. and ever since then, we just hit it off, man. Uh, you know, the reason why I like Ricky is because he's a trainer, yes. Everyone was telling the trainer of the stars. People were telling he's trained on the What Ricky knows, Ricky never fought. He's one and four, one and three, whatever. So <laughs> there's <laughs> This is that, but I'm like, hey, at least but I'm honestly, honestly, <laughs> but, but, but honestly, he's been around it. He's been around Joe Guzzi, he's been around uh, Corrales, he's been around uh, Diego, uh, Diego Reyes, Casa Mayor. Yeah, all these guys. He's been but he around. got thug in him though, he got a lot of thug in him. That's probably what you need. No, no, it's not the thug part because, you know, I, you know what, what I like about him is that, he calls me. Uh -huh. He calls me every day. He checks up on me. He makes sure I'm running. He makes sure my weight's on time. Every time I come in the morning, he checks me before I come in. If I'm overweight, he gets mad at me. He's like, what the fuck, fucker? You was this way when you came in. Now you're this way now. So you know that that's what I like. And I like that discipline that he gives me. He holds. He builds it on my. He makes me like. Accountable, like motherfucker, you guys. We're a team. Doing. We're a team together. So, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I like about it, you know. And we hit it off. I like you in this corner, though. Like for real, for I'm not kissing your ass now, but I like. I mean, I've had maybe five to ten interactions with you, and every time you're like, 
really like stern. Your eyes are really. Yeah. Real well, well, you know what? You, I, I learned that from Joe. I mean, I've been with Joe since I was 12 years old, and I seen him with Marky Sosa, Michael Nunn, uh, Lionel yeah. Butler, Frankie Lyle, uh, Frankie Gordy, Diego Rafael Reyes, you know, Casa Mayor, Diego Corrales. I did camps. Ca I, you know, Casa Mayor lived with me. So when I see Joe was straight with his fighters, he was on it. He, their fighter would never overweight, only one time. And that's embarrassing. You know, I trained actually uh, Soto Peraz when we fought uh, Mike Jones. You know, Joe worked the corner in the second, but I trained Peraz uh, for that fight. And uh, I had, actually that same day, we were both going to be weight. Because Peraz embarrassed me, you know what I mean? I was embarrassed because I hate being overweight. That's your first fight, the weight. So when we went in there, he was a half a pound over when he was on the patio part when he fought Margarito. And Brandon and Carrasco were both in the locker room, in the, in the Cowboys uh, locker room, losing weight. <laughs> I go, wow, I go, this is embarrassing. And, and, and the truth is that I don't realize, but we have pictures that we have took in a lot. Oh, we have pictures way back, you know, in, in the Robbers gym. And now, now we're here. We're hey, talking about that, and I call Robert. You know, when he called you know, me, I, I, out of respect. He's a snitch. I don't respect. <laughs> Oh, oh, he's, he's a snake, he's a uh, snake because he was fucking taking out the screen, you know, taking out the scenes in the back. <laughs> I'm still learning in this game, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I've been under Joe's wing my whole life. So, you know, sometimes you gotta spread and nobody really knows me or gives me credit. I'm learning, I gotta make my world champion, but I wanna make my first world champion from scratch, which would be hoping God willing my nephew. Your nephew, yeah. But it, it would never hurt to get a, 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 a elite fighter or a top fighter like Brandon that I, I'm, I can't say I'm experiencing one because I know a lot of shit. You know, I, mean, I know a lot of stuff about boxing, and I'm still learning. I watch Peter Tate from Victor every night of him and, and every other fighter. But I call Robert out of, out, of, uh, out of respect. I call Robert, hey, Brandon called me. He wants me to work with him. I want to tell you first if it's okay. But he gave me his blessing, you know. It's disrespect. A lot of fighters don't do that. A lot of trainers don't do that. You know, they just, they're snakes. They take off and they go, fuck it. You know, there's a few fighters that done that here. That's taking off. Don't even have the courage to call their trainer and tell them that. Oh, the other trainer called me. He's not Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie! <laughs> Miss you, brother. Love you. <laughs> I'll call you in a bit, Ellie. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all lovers? <laughs> Hell yeah. That's my favorite man. <laughs> Talk to us about the elite fighters that do come here. Obviously, Brandon is here, but you also get Birdo coming in here. A week ago, you had Amir Khan. Floyd Mayweather, when he's in town, he's here. Uh, Justin Bieber is here with the star. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then we get Mike Epps, the Watsons come around. You know, you get everybody coming in here. Nate Diaz, when he's not oh, beating up on Conor McGregor, you know? <laughs> so, so, talk to us about how this gym got its reputation with Joe at the helm, but also with you being one of the main vocal points here. Well, you gotta remember, Joe. The Goosens is, yeah. is, that, is the name. People always tell me, hey, since you took over the gym, one who came here. Change it to Ricky Funes. That is the dumbest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, who, the, who the heck is Ricky Funes? You know what I mean? I mean, some people know me, but not a lot of. Not, the name has been known, you know? Yeah. Somebody actually, somebody, uh, last week someone sent me a picture of uh, Roadhouse with uh, Patrick Swayze. You know, uh, somebody's oh, wow. using that, the, the Tengu's box reserve in a, in a bar scene. Oh, and, nice. I, and that was back in 80 something, you know what I mean? So I go, this name has been around. I gotta keep it going, you know, before Dan passed away. You know, then, then uh, told me, Ricky, keep that name going. And, and I, I tend to do that. I keep doing that, you know what I mean? Uh, Ricky Funes, maybe someday when I have ready to make a name for myself. I might, but I still love the Goosen, you know? Yeah. They made, they, they, I'm here because of them. They took me off the street when I was gangbanging, when I was younger, and you know, changed my life. I think that's the stupid thing you could do, you even change it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ricky. It's like Tony. <laughs> yeah. hey, like your trainer. Yeah. He's your trainer. Yeah. I came here for ten goods. I ain't coming for Ricky. Ah, <laughs> hey, but let me tell you, we have a great chemistry between Brandon and I. You know, we trainers and fighters like to grow. You know, you're gonna have those disagreements. You're gonna come. You're gonna have that. You know what I mean? But Brandon and I, we have those things. Sometimes he comes grumpy. You know, like he's PMSing it. I go, fuck, <laughs> man. What's wrong with this guy? Hey, should. That's your name right there, bro. <laughs> Chris, call me, let me know what's popping. Yeah. Hey, you guys in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Things happen here hey, hey, sure. all the time. 
Hey, so so that's that's how it is, man. You know, I'm very blessed. I I I learn from people how to network. I throw this name out there, and wherever I go, I give out shirts, beanies. Or, or I just put it out to put repetition pictures. You're right, you have to do right, that. Right, right, You've right, got a network, you know what I mean? No, we saw you at uh, Berto Ortiz. You yeah. had a nice uh, 10 goosey stand yeah. right there, you uh -huh. know, right, right outside. So. You know, thanks, thanks to Tom Brown, who's a, a, a TGB, oh, no. you know, uh, I've been with him as well. I remember when Tom Brown used to pick me up here. I used to work at a, at a telemarketing place, and he used to pick me up at 5.30 in the morning at my mom's house to take me to go work with him. You know, we're like family. Nice. You know? So, you know, now it's just, Focusing on Brandon, my nephew Juan, um, get him in shape. Brandon's helping, they both helping each other out. Um, but Brandon, he's looking good to me. I, I'm very impressed. There's one thing you can't change about, about Brandon is his heart and his mentality that he's out there to kill him. You know, a lot of people say he might not be skillful, but you know what? The heart and the balls will, kill, will take the skills away. And you guys seen that in fights. Yes. <laughs> so, so, speaking of. So we fast forward past Ortiz. Who's on your? Who's the top three fighters? You say you want the best, the best of the. Who would you? We we, we spoke to a lawyer, uh -huh. and uh, there's badass names. You know, uh, you cannot see past uh, Victor. No. Still, you know, you, but after that, we'll, we'll, there's big names. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, 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 yeah we're, 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 talking about, we're talking about Figueroa, we're talking about Porter, we're it's talking it's about Berto, right Samuel Basket. There's just names That's to right. mention. That there's a big, uh, there's a list of names on 147. It's just Ortiz. It's just Ortiz right now. <laughs> yeah. So right now, that's why we can, you cannot see past that because you know you never know what could happen. But our mind, our mental, mentality is we're going there to kill. And the only it thing I'll give Ortiz credit. And then he is a dangerous guy is that he made because he does, he does have pop. He has that power. Uh -huh. He has that power. He does it hard. That's the only thing I give him. He has that power. Okay. Let me take two things you just said. One, you just said your mentality is all on Ortiz. Does that make you even more dangerous? Because you said earlier as well that you didn't really have Bradley in mind. You were just like trying to lose weight and gain it. Does that just give you like a mental edge for yourself to get to victory? Nah. Uh, I know what I'm doing. I know what I can do when I'm trained and well prepared. Uh, when I'm trained and well prepared, I, I know what I can do. Do people forget, do people forget what, what when he trained for Acosta, Peterson? Come on, you guys can't neglect that. You guys look kind of go back. He, he was the underdog on those fights. And, and I look at that, but fuck, he's gonna fight Peterson. He's gonna get boxed. He's gonna get boxed. Uh, 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 what's the other guy? Acosta? Uh, Jorge uh, Teron when they thought I was going to lose my first up uh, when I won the NBA. Yeah, and what, what uh, the other guy? Wow, Alvarado, the, Alvarado, the, Alvarado, the, no, 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 I'm talking about the beginning when you became world champion. Acosta, Peterson. I was saying what, Richard Abril? No, not Abril, was a fucking... Acosta when I came champion. There we go, yeah, and I go, fuck, man, you know, people are really forgetting what Brandon could really do. Remember, he's a slugger, he's a e Everybody fucker. say that, oh, Brandon's a punch bag, Brandon's in that. But these motherfuckers don't know, dude. When I'm inside, I fucking they miss a lot of shots, or they they have, they land the shot, but they hit in my glove, and when my gloves on my chin, they hit like that, it makes my head goes back because my hit the glove is not hitting me. How many times I come out of a fight, Bruce my face all fucked up? Only the first time I came out of a fight like that when I fought. Pacquiao, and when I fought Richard Bro. That's the only fucking time I ever came out of hands, Alvarado. So it wasn't really fucked up the first or second time. It wasn't really as fucked up. But I can say when I fought Pacquiao, it was the only time. Other than that, dude, people don't understand. I, I have a fucking great inside boxing game. He gave an ice one. And even better now because we've been you working you on gave an ice one. Yeah, I get hit once in a while, but you know, that's part of boxing. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're part of boxing. Roy got yeah. hit. Roy gets but, hit. <laughs> dude, I, I, I can weave, I can bob, I can fucking. You know. Well, we got to see that. We got to, because now we are yeah, in the second way, half of your career. But we you, guys, you guys can't see it because we ain't got to fight yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, that's what you're working on. I want you to preserve your career and last as long as you want because the more we interview you, the more money we gonna make because it gets more clips. So, <laughs> so it's like you said, he has no filter. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody loves and, it. And I love that. Uh -huh. People love that about it. Uh -huh. We have kids here. I have my daughter here or something. This fuck here. And he has his kids here. I go, earmuffs kids. Fuck. Uh, this one. <laughs> But that, that's, 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 that's what people love, he's, he's real. Yeah. You know, and I'm learning a lot from that too because I want to be real as well. Because I tell my kids too, I 
got earmuffs when I'm at the house. Earmuffs. They got earmuffs because I have a chance to cuss. I don't. I, I'm not trying to do it, but I just do it. It just comes out. Now, now Robert Garcia said a long time ago that uh, he Why? had sex during camp. We always want to know, like, what's the secret to losing weight? Do fighters have sex during camp? What's the eating habits? Like, these are like stuff that boxing fans well, really well, want to know. Well, I know you're married, so. Well, what I learned about now about the secret to losing weight is now I got a nutritionist guy, David Bolin. David Bolin. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker is badass. Mm -hmm. That fucking guy, he's from Australia. That motherfucker is badass. He told me how to fucking eat. He told me what to eat, what type of proportions, and he gives me this. He's a natural, he's all organic. Everything he does is organic. And he tells my chef what to give me and everything. It's burning my food faster. My metabolism is working faster. So, like, I'll, there's some days, like, I'll go eat, like, something really healthy with my family, but. And then I'll, I'll just come back. I'll be like a, two pounds, a pound over. I'll go to sleep. I'll wake up the way that I was supposed to be at. Then I'll run in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be the way where I wanted to come before I come to the gym. Then when I come to the gym, then we need to go like this. <laughs> well, that's because, look, fighters, but when they go to sleep, they lose heard, two pounds overnight. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how you lose yeah. weight when you sleep? I lose, I've been losing like three or four pounds a night. Really? Mm. Yeah. Nice. But what they <laughs> had, what they, well, Dave, the nutrition guy, what he had to do, I'm telling you, dude, is no joke. What's the last thing you eat? You eat an apple? The last thing you eat is an no, apple? No, no. Last apple. thing I ate, my last dinner is supposed to be at 5 o'clock. That's my last dinner. Oh, okay. So my right. dinner is at 5 o'clock. I get it. And if I get hungry between 5 and before I sleep, start munching like apple, fruit, but not bananas. Bananas, apple, fruits, grapes, whatever. Just, you know, munch on that. And you go to sleep. Just feel your hunger. So that's what I've been learning. And I've been learning that shit. It, it's supposed to be great. And like I'm telling you, man, it's weird because I've been losing weight easily. And I've been drinking water like a motherfucker. But one thing that he had me, I haven't been t eating. It's coffee. Drinking no, coffee. No. Can no. I <laughs> I know you love tacos. I know you love yeah, tacos. I have not been eating. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> red meat. Tacos way. Yeah, right. Red meat. Uh, oh, no red meat? No uh, red meat. That's, that's what, I think that's what helped me out a lot. Because when I, when I eat red meat, I notice this shit. When I eat red meat, dude, I get so plugged up. I get constipated. Yeah, constipated. Uh, I get so constipated, it's hard for me to take a shit. I'll be taking <laughs> shit. I won't take a shit for days, dog. Uh, Are you going to become a vegan now like David? Uh, I feel like I am, dude. Really? All I'll be eating is chicken, fish, and greens. Well, well there's no vegan there if you eat chicken and fish. Yeah. <laughs> chicken, yeah, greens, and like fish, and that's it. But I'm not a vegan, but I've been eating that shit, and it's working out really well. But the thing that sucks, dude, because when, when I get constipated, I fucking hate it, dog. <laughs> I fucking hate it because he takes me to this fucking place. When it's sticking a tube in your ass? Oh, the colonics. Oh, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's over there like, wait, what? <laughs> what? All fighters do it. Like, All fighters do it. All that fighters do it. All fighters do it. And that shit is the yeah, worst shit ever, because when they're doing it, a lady's right there with you and talking to you while she has something in your ass, fucking. Yeah, but I, I, like I, got, this. Water. I got something better for the, for the fighters. If you ever have, give me a call. I use Epsom salt. And I tell Brandon already, we, we still have to use yeah, it. But Epsom salt, but you gotta be very delicate. You have to stay home the whole day because you're gonna be running. Chorro, chorro, all. <laughs> Epsom salt, salt. salt, it just, it, it cleans out your whole, everything that you've been eating in your stomach, it just He's wipes everything water. out. It's, yeah, you mix it up, you Epsom salt, you lick it in uh, lukewarm water, you down that, make sure you have uh, orange juice on the side because it has the bitter, all natural oh, taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you drink a lot of water the whole day, but within like three, four hours, your stomach's like, Oh, like a purgante, yeah. a no, 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 but you make this out of Epsom salt. You go to the bathroom wow. all day. It cleans out your stomach. Okay. And you lose six, seven, eight pounds of all just dirt food that's been there for the six oh, months that you've been eating. Dang, that's uh, not especially like the holidays. I'm going to write it and get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 my mom tell me I love eating, bro. I'm, I mean, uh -huh. but you know, I, I, I got to, with Brandon, it's a whole different game now. Yeah, you know? and what he has to do too in the morning, like every morning I wake up, I drink, water. I drink a nice warm water with lemon in it, so you squeeze can, lemon in it right. to start building that up. So that's what I do every morning I wake up. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. And then he has to drink water constantly all fucking day. Mm -hmm. All fucking day, dude. I drink water all day. Like, I feel like I'm fucking 
pissing all night long. Yeah. Every day Don't you hate that? The most frustrating. No, Men mentally, do you feel like a new man? Like just doing all, like you're really committed mm -hmm. to your diet, committed to uh, No, you know, I just want to get back to the top again. I just want to show everybody I'm not done. So, you know, that's why, I, if it feels like I'm a new man, no, it's just, I'm just training harder. I'm right. just training hard again. That's what I'm doing when I first started, when I first came into pro. I was training hard. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm back at it again, training hard. And obviously that first step will be Victor Ortiz coming up shortly, right? Uh, you know, whatever happened, if it was him or not him, I'm ready for wherever. You know, uh, we, I know I gotta work my way back up to the top. And so it is what it is. And you know, that's what we're doing. Last question. My last question. If, if you put Victor Ortiz in deep water, will you keep him up or will you knock him out? Deep water? Yeah, say you, say you got him going, that, that, you want to beat him up for three rounds or do you want to knock him out? That's crazy because people have been telling me this and I have been thinking about it. Because you know what I do? I like to visualize. Uh -huh. When I'm running, that's why I like, sometimes I like to run on because I get a visualization. Uh -huh. I'm serious. People might think, man, Brian, you're fucking stupid. But I visualize, dude. I'm running all of a sudden on the wall. I'll see the picture what's happening. I see a picture how I fight. Like, for instance, this is no bullshit. <laughs> when I won my world title, I visualize. My dad's gonna be there, the way we're gonna win the fight, the way everything's gonna pay off. And the way I won the fight, I knocked him out. The way my dad was there in my corner, and the way we won that fight, it was just amazing, the celebration, everything. It was just fucking awesome, my wife was there with me. So, you know, I get that visualization. I don't know where it comes from, but I get it. And... What's the visualization? For a Victor Ortiz fight? It hasn't came clear yet, but... <laughs> I know I'm knocking him out. It hasn't came clear yet, but I know at the end of the day I will get my hands raised. Uh -huh. But my shit, if I'm gonna fuck with him, because I hate this motherfucker, maybe I might fight him. Should I drown him right away? Or partially drown him and survive him? Then partially just drown him and survive him and then finish him out. So you know torture mean? him like Kovalev did Pascal that second. So, <laughs> so, or Crawford carried Molina yeah. a couple that's, of that's, times. That's what I feel like, that's what I feel like, you know, I think I might. It might play off, who knows? That's what I'm saying though. I, I, I can't tell you this how it's gonna play off, but I do picture that too. Like, hurts his motherfucker bad right when he's about to drop, lead off a little bit, keep him a survivor, then go back at it again. <laughs> right when he's about to fall, so he can get off. But he so might drop without a punch. But you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, 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 you know. I think you're not getting an interview with him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pussy. No fucking pussy. Hey, yeah, G, man. Yeah, there, bro. Yeah, there. 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 Ye
Yeah, the match is beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I think he <laughs> said fucking Google too. <laughs> I found Ricky, it was Google, but it wasn't Ricky, it was Joe Guzan. Nah, fuck. And the reason why I remember... I'm about to go change that shit up, man. <laughs> you, you were in deep internet. Right. And the reason why I remember Ricky Train, I used him because I remember him from back in the day. Right, right, and I was right. like, fuck, I hit him in the DM. <laughs> he went down the DM. He slid in your DM? Oh! oh. I knew it was a hoe because when he answered back a lot, that's a hoe. No, hoes answer back and deal. From the from the famous Tim Lucifer. This motherfucker was trying to get at me. He wanted my dick so bad, he didn't give my number to Eddie, dog. He was getting my number. He said, "You wanted my dick, dog." From the famous Tim Lucifer gym, Ricky Funes, Brandon Reels, Fernando Pimentel from BehindTheGloves.com, and Fight Guys. Dominic Bernina Green TV. And a friend of the barbershop conversations, man. Saying, so we'll see you guys Appreciate later. We'll see you at the fights. Awesome. And make Thanks, sure bro. to keep up with these two yeah. with the big fight coming up. And uh, we'll have something for you guys about that fight. So don't worry about it. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Uh, Mine is at Miss Amanda Paris. Mine is PB underscore Miranda. Mine's A N N E L I S G J R. And Leach. No one can spell it right. JR. <laughs> Mine is Ashley to me. And on account of, okay, now, y'all gotta do this together, okay? Okay. Y'all have to say, um, thanks for watching Barbershop Conversations, okay? Wait, Barbershop Conversations. Yep. Okay. Get in title, get in title. Okay, that's what she said. <laughs> thanks for watching Barbershop Conversations. Thank you, guys. <laughs>